This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Get a free trial as well as 10% off using my links in the description. This is the sound of the mystical musical device also known as the Socket Ratchet Wrench. Found in every good toolbox, in every good garage, it truly defies the laws of physics, thermodynamics, and gravity, as nobody knows how it actually works. With a socket installed, it allows you to loosen bolts in tight spaces, but with a flick of a dainty little switch, proceed to tighten them up to a bloody impressive torque. When I say nobody knows how they work, I mean I don't know how they work. And when I don't know how something works, I'm quite tempted to take it apart and make my own crappier version. So this is me making my very own socket ratchet wrench, and I can't wait for you to be here for the journey. Bloody hell. This is complicated. Look how difficult that must be to make. This is sprung, there's a ball in it. There's a solid day's worth of file work there. There is a hole drilled in there. How do you drill a hole in like that? Oh no, it's at an angle. Okay, so that is physically possible to drill a hole like that. It appears that these three components are the key pieces for how this works. This assembly is toothed all the way around. This component has teeth on either side at a slight angle. The interaction of the square tenon of the lever and the square mortise of the catch mean that it can be rotated. It's upside down, but it means that when it's engaged in this direction, the ratchet is blocked from turning clockwise, but can go this way. When it's turned in that direction, the ratchet's blocked from going anti-clockwise, but can turn that way. Let's see if this style of socket wrench is any simpler. <laughs> I have no idea how it's supposed to open, actually. This one's definitely more complicated. This, of course, needs to be Damascus, so we can light the forge. It's been a nice little while. Under the power hammer, we have forged out some Ws, stacked them up, forged them together, twisted them, and then forged out this very rough blank shape for our wrench. And there is tons of extra material, which is exactly what we want for being able to machine it. Because I'm trying to make something that needs to be quite accurate, with some critical clearances and hole spacings, I want to have plenty of meat so that I can machine in reference surfaces to build from to create the accuracy we need. As you can see, we've got not just a handle, but a little stick up here. We've got two bits of round bar because the first thing I want to do is put this in the lathe to make this section and this section in line with one another and the same diameter so that we have those as starting points, which in my head I feel is going to help us when we get to machining this. Alrighty, this is 19 millimeters, that is 19 millimeters. They're pretty well lined up, and this is where it gets tricky. Every step in trying to machine something accurately is going to have an effect on the accuracy that you can have later on. The ease of setups and one's ability to do the job well. A good machinist would know in an instant the steps they need to make. Me? I could probably do with another day. 
Which is convenient, because this project, with all its intricacies, is going to be so much easier with a DRO on that mill. What is a DRO? It's one of these bad boys. It is a digital readout that is connected to scales which are connected to the ways of the machine, meaning you get a very accurate readout of the exact placement of your table and subsequently workpiece. It's so much easier than having to read dials and account for backlash. And in the past year and a half of having this Bridport mill, I've never got around to putting one on. I've even had the bloody kit for a whole year. Oh boy, let's work out what we've got to do. I think this was a bad idea. Here's the core principle of how this works. We're provided with this. This aluminum extrusion holds within it a magnetic strip. This magnetic strip is how we get the data about how far this travels because this is affixed to the ways of the machine. Then this magnetic encoder head reads how far it's traveled, sending magical data particles up the cable to the DRO computer. So you can imagine this stays fixed, the table moves, it reads distance. So we're gonna start on this long axis of the machine, and I've got our long extrusion here, sat atop parallels. We're gonna line it up to the center of travel, and then we're gonna drill and tap a whole bunch of holes, and then indicate it in to make sure it's straight. All right, let's indicate it in. So this is a dial test indicator, and this will tell us, thanks to that dial, if there's any deviation on the tip. Hey, it's looking pretty good. Now we've got to install the bracket that holds the encoder. I hate instructions so much. So now the magnetic strip, which has a little bit of stickiness on the back of it, needs to be inserted. In she goes. Ta-da! And now we slide the stainless steel strip in. With a little shim of cardboard, the encoder goes on, and hopefully I find the hole. Pull out the spacer, and hopefully... The bad boy works. Yes! It does it. That's one down, two to go. This machine must have had a DRO at some point, and look at how close we were to the original mountings for the original DRO. It's in one hole, and it just barely misses the other one. So let's put a stud in here, and then drill a hole next to it. That's tight. All right, here's the moment of truth. It turns on. And look at this. We've got an x-axis a Y axis and a Z or Z axis. We can zero out numbers and we can do all sorts of mathematical things like calculating PCDs and lines. So it is wonderfully exciting to have a DRO on the mill and we can immediately start putting it to use on this socket wrench, but that's gonna have to be for the next episode. Thank you so much for watching and let me tell you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. It is a website building platform designed to empower everybody to have a beautiful home base on the internet. And in fact, I just built myself a second Squarespace website for a new passion and side venture of mine in dog training and dog sport. From buying the domain through Squarespace space and publishing the website it was seamless it took me just an hour or two there were countless themes for me to choose from to make a website that looks great on both computer and mobile the goal of this passion is to inspire people to do more dog training and get into dog sports and as it grows with Squarespace if I want to I could sell unlimited physical or digital products and as my experience grows I could use Squarespace scheduling to book in-person or virtual appointments if I wanted to I could have paywall access content through Squarespace member areas or sell products and services in person using Squarespace point of sale. The opportunities with Squarespace are truly limitless. Whatever your hobby, passion, or business, showcase it with Squarespace. It's incredibly inexpensive, especially considering you'll get 10% off your first purchase when you use code FORGE at checkout and click my link in the description, and you'll have 14 days to try it for free and see how easy it is to get started. Thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.